wrapped up in a team as it is now. I've covered this team for 22 years and I've never seen anything like this. This team has that something that you need to win. Boss told me first he said that was the longest five minutes of my career. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. This is unbelievable. Right then and there is when we knew this might be a team of destiny. We might have a chance to win it all. There was just this attitude that we're not going to lose tonight. It was tough to get sleep that night. All you think about was just Stanley Cup and having your hands. For the first time since 1961, the Chicago Blackhawks. The Chicago Blackhawks, an original six franchise with a proud and storied history, were struggling for an identity. When Chairman Rocky Wirtz took control in October 2007, this franchise was really the worst franchise in sports three or four years ago. It was a franchise that was dead, it was forgotten. You couldn't find their games on TV. You could shoot a cannon through this arena and not hit anybody. What we were was an irrelevant sport in a terrific city. I knew from day one that the mission was going to be difficult. The changes were going to be plentiful and they were going to be swift. We had to reconnect with the former players and we had to reconnect with our fan base. We knew we had to get this right. The renaissance that's gone on here really over the last three plus years has been, it's been unbelievable. I've never seen the city so wrapped up in a team as it is now. It's just the same excitement I remember. Come the Hawks, the, the mighty, mighty Blackhawks. Black Blackhawk fans have had a reason to dig that old jersey out of the closet and come down to the United Center. Oh. When there's a game night, the West Loop here in the city's alive. You walk around this place now. I was downtown yesterday. I see a, a big bus with a Blackhawk logo on it and one goal across the front of it. I've covered this team for 22 years, and I've never seen anything like this. They have turned this town upside down as far as hockey is concerned. The excitement of the stands carried to the ice as the 2009 Blackhawks rekindled the club's glory, qualifying for the playoffs for the first time in six seasons and embarking on a playoff run that shocked the hockey world. Advancing to the Western Conference Finals, it gave them a lot of confidence in a year where they just felt that if they could make it to the playoffs, that was a huge bonus. We had a young team, an experienced team, just having fun playing games and winning. And the Chicago Blackhawks are going to move on to round two. We were just excited to be there. Chicago met their toughest test, their hated rival, the defending champion Detroit Red Wings. They played a team with a lot of experience, a lot of depth. They were taught a lesson by the Red Wings. The greatest thing about history is doing one thing, and that's learning from it. We learned from To improve, difficult decisions had to be made. The Hawks parted ways with stars Nikolai Habi Bullen and Martin Havlat in favor of playoff tested veterans. We had the youngest team in the league last year, and we were maybe a little bit short on some guys who had those battles. We need those guys that have been there before and done it. John Madden's won two Stanley Cups. He's the unheralded worker that does the things that don't get the glory, and the blocking shots, the face-offs, the penalty killing. Getting a guy like that is really important for a lot of reasons. Not only because of his role on the edge, but how he carries himself, what it is to win. 
In addition to the veteran center, the team recruited a pair of Slovak wingers from the rival that eliminated them in the prior season. They went out and they acquired Marian Hosa, Thomas Kopecki, two players that had NHL experience in the Stanley Cup Finals. Marian Hosa had been well done. is just a great player. Marion Hosa's in short-handed. He scores! We were doing pretty well without him, but when he came back, he just added that whole other presence. With the new teammates aboard, the Hawks headed to Finland to start the 2010 season. We had fun with it. It was a great way for our team to bond and get the season off, uh, off to a great start. It's about 11 o'clock Chicago time. We're just getting things started on the plane. Going overseas, it was a good team building experience. I thought that that's the best time to do it. You're stuck with each other for seven or 10 days. Our veteran free agent acquisition, Mr. John Madden. Uh, stuck on a team with a bunch of youngsters. You're with the guys the whole time. It's a long road trip. We got to hang out with each other in the hotels and on the streets of Helsinki. That's what you call a scene on This is just the ice okay. throughout the regular season. Thank you. 
consistency usually escapes a young team. The coaching staff did a good job of, of maintaining focus and, and keeping us prepared all season long. Preparation, resilience, and breakout performances from their budding stars powered a record-setting campaign. And the 2009 Chicago Blackhawks are the winningest team in franchise history. With 52 wins and 112 points, the Hawks captured their first division title in 17 years and headed into the playoffs as the number two seed in the Western Conference. The matchup in the first round of the Blackhawks with the Nashville Predators, I don't think it was one that anybody really felt like they could look forward to. Nashville proved to be a very worthy opponent. Still not convinced that Yammy's comfortable in there. I, I don't know. I'm not sold that he's into this yet. Chance hit, they score! Speaking of the devil, just a looping puck in the front of the net. Yammy fans on it. Very thoughtful, nice job of picking out what he needed to do to be successful. And really early on in that series, frustrated the Blackhawks with a stifling defensive type of play and counter punching the Blackhawks were playing. to know that this guy's a big-time goalie. That big sharp trying to squeeze through a jet. He got to the middle. He shoots. He scores! Patrick Sharp! 3-0 Chicago. And that is all she wrote. Anthony Nemi with his second shutout of the playoffs. And they're going to take home ice back to Chicago. Game five here was uh, one of those nights where you feel like you're very fortunate and we got out of that one live. That one right circle is up. He scored! Damn it, Lang one. Yeah, he shoots! Stopped it for level to rebound. He scores! It was one of those games where it was back and forth and Nashville hung around, hung around. They knew they couldn't skate and up and down. Start coming back and say, I'm going to get that short hand goal. The Predators have tied it up. Down back to Erat. He scores! Erat has broken the tie. What Nashville's done is amazing. They've just quieted 22,000 people. There is no emotion in this crowd at all. As if things couldn't get worse. <laughs> Throws the puck back towards the front of the net, looking for an open Jason Arnott. Next thing you know, the Hawks are skating down the ice. Anthony Nemi's pulled for an extra attacker, even though they're shorthanded. The Hawks made three unbelievable passes. Sharp on the right half board. The Sabre, the Tate, right to the Sixty. Five minutes of my career. Hawks come to full strength. Hosel's out of the box. Jomerson can head behind the net for Nolan. Now Sobel right point. Hammers a shot. Here's Hosel to the right. Hawks win! Hawks win! Hawks win! Man, Hawks win! Black Hawks win! It's a game winner!
handed and you're short handed. One of your best players has five minutes left. You score a short handed goal, of course, overtime, and then you win the game. How do you win the game? The guy that took the penalty comes out of the box, goes right to the front of the net, the puck finds the piece of gold. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. This might be the team that might uh, have a chance to win it all. The Blackhawks rode the momentum from their dramatic victory into game six. And seize the series. Hawks win. The Blackhawks will move to the next round of the playoffs and take on the Vancouver Canucks. We're going to get a rematch of last year's playoff. Character, great response after getting three goals in the first game. That made the rest of the way. Now we know we're playing Vancouver. The fun starts now, boys. Great job. There was a lot of talk going into that series uh, from what happened the previous year. And there's lots of bad blood there. Saved by Luanga, who was then drilled by Buffum. I think everybody thought it was going to be kind of a, a bruising, nasty kind of series because, you know, two teams don't like each other very well. There are too many altercations and too few officials here. The games are pretty physical. Some fights and stuff. And it's Played nervous, um, passed the puck when they should shoot, shoot it when they should pass. Everything was off. They were just out of sorts. And they got trounced in game one. Everybody listen to what Ladd or Matt and guys that have been through it uh, to hear what they had to say. It was kind of a theme throughout the year in the locker room. A lot of times, if we lose a game the next day before the game, guys would talk about that locker room and say, OK, good teams don't lose back to back. Down early in game two, Chicago fought back for a 4-2 victory. With the series tied, the teams headed to Vancouver, where Big Buff took center stage. Dustin Buffett is has always been an incredibly intriguing prospect because uh, you don't find very many guys that big who can move as well as he does or handle a puck as well as he does. Second power play for Chicago, hammered by Keith, fought off by Milano, and brought in by Dustin Buffett. Once he gets to the front of the net, you're not moving him. And he has such good hands for a large and he's able to find a lot of them more than anybody so you could tell every time he's on the ice he's going out there and he's playing his hardest wasn't doing too much um, you know just standing in front of the net and uh, you know causing problems Patrick Kane tries to make it happen so does Buffalo who bulldozes his way in and they score it's in the net behind the logo and he got him ducked to the line and um, you know really might made himself you know be a presence Taves has a chance he scores you know it's not easy he's a, he's a good goaltender you just you could let him see the puck Turning point in that series. Patrick Kane. Taves has a chance. He scores. Off stack in a deep. Here's a chance for Taves. Goal number two on the night. Goal with delay. Put it in front. Taves. He scores. Patrick for Jonathan Taves. Michelle Hoffman. The Blackhawks have a streak of gold in this series. They win game four. Although the Canucks won game five. Chicago had another opportunity to close out their rivals back in Vancouver. You could sense it in the locker room a lot of times that there was just this attitude that we're not going to lose tonight. There's not a chance that we're going to let this one get away from us. What a goal by Patrick Kane! Preparation all day, exactly what you 
we were looking for. All about business, everybody was into it. Played the perfect road game right off the bat. Now we put ourselves exactly where we want to be. When that series was over, I know that uh, we were happy to move on and we'd have to see those guys for another year. Entering the Western Conference Final, the Blackhawks opened the series on the road for the first time. We got asked a lot this season about our road record and how well we picked the road, I think, it was because you know, we got along so well in the hotel. As a team, you're always going to spend a lot of time together, especially on the road during the playoffs. Taser, how does it feel for once again? But, uh, you know, we always got along. Brower likes to cheat sometimes, but you can get a good treat to get into first place. We had our little room. It's getting your mind away from hockey, and, and it was the video games for our guys on the road, and that's what guys did. No way. <laughs> a couple of us that didn't play, we'd sit there and be involved too, just play. we'd make fun of the guys, we'd joke around with them, whoever got last place, and if it was Taser, we'd really get on Taser, because he would get so mad. So we would always kind of cheer for him, he was pretty bad, I don't think he lost too many of those games. We want to take care of each other, whether it's on or off the ice. And you guys just get along. That's what it is. There you have it from one of the worst players in the game. Winners of five straight away games, the Hawks visited the top seeded San Jose Sharks at the Shark Tank. And the second time since 1994 that the top two seeds have gotten this far. We were confident and we kept things very simple. San Jose is a tough team and they're fast and they'll make you pay on the power play. We got a little bit in that the penalty trouble. Sure Easily in period one of game one against San Jose. Could have been three minutes. Good stuff there again by Anti-Miami. Anti-Miami closed the door and did not allow the San Jose Sharks to get a 2-0 or a 3-0 lead. In game one, Andy Niemi frustrated the Sharks' attack. In game two, it was the ground. Dave Warren was um, incredible. Calling him a little rat. I mean, he really is, and he's kind of quietly does it. And I think a lot of guys don't expect it coming from him, and then all of a sudden you see a, a guy just snap on him. Boy, it was... Oh, man. You could know, say he was maybe our most versatile player on, on our team, just uh, how he found a way to get an edge on his opponent every single shift. That Thornton and Roland again? Yes. When playing against Joe and Heatley and Marla, it was a great moment. Uh, those are three top players in this league. The stick of Joe Thornton was caught up in the jersey of Dave Bowling. While the Rat kept San Jose's top line in check, his teammates showcased their scoring touch. Record seven straight road wins in a commanding 2-0 lead. The Blackhawks headed home. Justin Bartlett. They call him Big Buff because of his girth. 
Well, they can call him Big Buck because of the big goals he scored. Chicago has a commanding lead. Three games to none in this best of seven. Entering game four, the Hawks were a win away from the Stanley Cup final. A turnaround shot, they score! What a wonderful play at the front of the net by Logan Couture. But the Sharks would not go quietly. Now Duncan Keith just got hit in the face with the puck, and he's hurt and headed for the bench. Here comes the Sharks. It's punched to Blazic, side of the net, right score! Patrick Marlowe has done it again. It's two to nothing, Sharks. Marlowe's goal hurt the Hawks on the scoreboard sent their best defenseman to the locker room. God love Dunk. He he will give his heart and soul to win a hockey game. There you see it hit Duncan Keith. You got mouthpiece flying, teeth flying. Kind of sat there and put his head down and grabs his mouth and just kind of looked around and grabs the trainer and said, well, hey, we should probably get you on the training. He just kind of looked around and said, I need to do it. And the restroom he came in and I just saw blood dripping, you know, coming out of his mouth and he was just losing it, uh, yelling at everybody and trying to, to get get the dentist in there to, to fix him up so he could get back out there. It looks like it resulted in a couple of lost teeth for number two. He gave everybody a cringe, but uh, he went in, got his thing done there in the room, and he was back out before the period ended. When he smiles now and he's got no teeth and you can see, see gums, it's as funny as ever, but he, uh, he sacrificed for the team and we'll never forget it. Brent Seabrook cut the deficit to one, and when Keith returned to the ice, the Hawks were inspired. Eager able to lob it on back, taken by Bullen around the line. Bullen comes out in front of the shot, scores! 2-2 late in the second, in front, Buckley scores! 3-2 Chicago. the Cinderella Philadelphia Flyers. They find themselves in the last week of the season scrambling to make the playoffs. They have a home and home with the Rangers. They lose badly on Friday night. They come back on Sunday needing a win. figured they would, and now they go and they have to face the Chicago Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup Final. The Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, game one of the Stanley Cup Championship. Watch the Hawks! Watch the Hawks! Two rich histories, two great franchises, the Philadelphia Flyers and the Chicago Blackhawks. teams as having the kind of depth along the blue line, having great depth up front, that they were the kinds of teams that could get here. I think the Flyers can look at the Chicago Blackhawks and almost be like looking in the mirror, and vice versa. These are two teams that like to control the puck. These are two teams that like to be aggressive on the offense. These are two teams that like to hit. We're going to see a physical series. I think going into it, I think everybody, you can see the, the different pressure, the different uh, animal that is uh, game one of the finals. They're anxious, they're nervous, they're, you know, they just want to get out there. Game one from the United States of America, the Blackhawks of the Flyers, the 2010 Stanley Cup final is about to begin. Flip of the puck, and the Stanley Cup finals are underway. Allow the big hits, allow that animosity to build. As the animosity increased, so did the scoring chances. Five 
fires to the puck to the net, and it's in. A bouncing puck gets behind Andy Niemi, and the Philadelphia Flyers have the first goal of the Stanley Cup <laughs> final. Philadelphia scored first, but the madhouse wouldn't be silent long. Here's the shot by Seconds ago, all of a sudden, is back to his bathroom. Oh, Jeff Carter races into the hawk zone, right corner, shot it through the trees and around. And Defensively, and it never seemed to work. Danny Breyer winds to take the shot at the front and right on. Right back to Breyer, he scores! With 26 seconds left in the opening period, Danny Breyer fires it in for a 3 2 Flyers lead. Both teams listen very comfortable when the puck was always in place. closely contested. The team settled down, knowing that they were already in the finals. There's no reason to be nervous. You're in the tournament. Get going. Thomas Kopetsky, 6-5 Chicago. Kobe came back, found himself on that line while uh, Lad was out, scored a huge goal for us, and uh, was a force the rest of the playoffs. What an interesting epic flow this game has had all night. And now the Blackhawks at home have a 6-5 lead, but there's a ways to go yet. Heitel waits for Amanda to get outside. Gets it to Danny Breyer with a shot and a clip save by Miami. His biggest save of the game with two minutes and six seconds left. You know, it was one game, you know, uh, we got to take a five minutes, uh, you know, uh, we'll enjoy it for five and, uh, you know, get, get back on Monday. We can be a thousand times better than we were tonight. The third
Help me out here. The addition of Carcillo, he uh, he made an impact right away with his speed and his physical play. No one on the ice was safe, not even Carcillo's teammates. Oh, and two flyers collide. Carcillo and Carter Carter shaking up. What a hit! <laughs> good hit. That's your first good hit of the year. That's your first good hit of the year. He was yelling and screaming, and and that's great. Now that, that that's hockey. That's playoffs. <laughs> Teams remained deadlocked deep into the second when the Hawks found a rare opening in the tight checking game. Look at Keith. Hit the shot. He shoots the save. Rebound. Hawks have scored. It was nice to see him score that goal. Quit answering all those questions about why he wasn't scoring. And Marion Hosa scores to get some hot goal. Take a look at the games to realize he was one of our top forwards every night. Hosa's goal snapped an eight-game drought. 28 seconds later, an unlikely hero emerged. That's kind of the way our team has been all year. Is you can plug anybody into a different line and they throw Benny out there with, with Kane for a shift and he pots a big one. Buffett sends the puck to Eager over the flyer line. Right side, the scores! Eager! by surprise. Everybody on our team knows what kind of skills they have. This is called a bonus goal. It's huge for the confidence of the team, and then even more so you just believe like, it doesn't matter who we throw out there right now. Anybody's got a chance to contribute and score. As the third period began, a two-goal deficit did not discourage the hard-fighting Flyers. I think we realized fully really, this team is good uh, for real. A lot of weapons and a lot of offensive guys that can make plays. With Chabot Gagne to Mike Richards behind the defense. He's stuck by the enemy. With the Flyers buzzing, Pressure was once again placed squarely on the shoulders of their goaltender, Antti Niemi. And here's Asha with a tie goal. What a cop save by Antti Niemi. He had the end on one way and he reached back with the goal and made a spectacular stop. Philly really came strong in the third and uh, he made several key saves. Team in the first shot right through, save rebound, tap for Kanye. He's doing the job, certainly. I mean, he wouldn't be in the finals if he weren't getting decent goals. That's for sure. Anti preserve the win for us at the end of it. You'd probably call that a goalie win. Chicago by the skin of their teeth holds off the Flyers in the third. Stanley Cup final. Kind of feel like you got a stranglehold on the series. The scene shifted to Philadelphia, where the Flyers were almost unbeatable throughout the playoffs.
As the second period began, the road tested Hawks looked to turn the tide. After Kane off the boards with it, far side, a one timer score! Off the stick of Duncan Keith that deflected off the of flyer and into the net pass late, and the Blackhawks have tied this game. That goal quiets this crowd. Now things are starting to get a little nastier between these two teams. Six minutes played, second period, tie game. Far corner, now it comes back to Parker, shot to the box.